Hello, everyone, and welcome back for Barbara School number 14, episode 14. And today we're talking with Barbara. Hi, Barbara, down there. I can see you. <laughs> everyone else can as well. I've decided to make a habit of putting us both on the screen when we first open up so everyone can see right away that you're there. Um, but we're going to do um, a talk today. You're going to do a talk today on walk-ins from both ET realms and spiritual realms. And this is a topic that I'm intrigued by because I don't honestly don't really know completely what to make of walk-ins, how it happens. I know too, Sheila Seppi and Linda Wilkes, who have both spoken openly in the community about being walk-ins, but um, I really don't know a lot about it. So I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. So thank you as always for being here to talk to us and thank you everyone for being here to listen. So Barbara, go right ahead and dive in. I'm very curious. Well, um, a walk-in is I think a, an extremely special person. I didn't know about walk-ins. I never heard of such a thing until about 1990 when I was at a past life regression therapy conference with colleagues I had been trained with for at least five years. And around the breakfast table one day, one of the women uh, who is a past life regression therapist happened to be talking about an unusual client who had come to her. And that client was a young woman who had lots and lots of um, allergies. She was allergic to almost every food and everything that grew. And, oh, it was really a difficult life for her. And they continued to do a series of regressions to go back to the source of these allergies. And it's not unusual for a person to have an allergy, but to have an allergy to almost everything, you know, made life very, very difficult for this woman. And they finally discovered uh, during the regression work, discovered something that that therapist had not been aware of previously, nor was I aware of this as she was talking about it. Uh, the reason for that woman having allergies is that she had done a walk-in exchange. Now, what I mean by that is uh, there is somebody here. It might be a man. It might be a woman. It might be a person who is in his or her 30s or 40s or, or 50s. And, and that person just doesn't really want to be here in life anymore. Uh, that person might feel like he or she is uh, just not very useful here or is not fulfilling any sense of purpose in any way, might be depressed, usually wouldn't be out and out suicidal, but it's a person who just really doesn't want to continue life. And then there is a spirit, a soul, either in the spirit dimension or in the extraterrestrial dimension, living as an extraterrestrial, who becomes aware of this human who doesn't want to be here anymore. And, and that soul, whether it's in the spiritual realm or the extraterrestrial realm, has been wanting certain kinds of work, helpful work, to be done here on planet Earth with other human beings. And instead of going through the whole process of the soul being born in a, you know, being carried in the womb of a particular mother and being born and going through infancy and toddler years and childhood years and teenage years and all the way to adult years, all the years that that takes um, in order to do the work that they would like to see done here, they decide to make a soul exchange with that person who really doesn't want to be her anymore. But that person has a, a body and has a life and has parents and a family and might have a spouse, might have children by that time. And so it's, it's a real lifetime going on. So the two souls get together, probably when the human is asleep uh, the souls get together and make a soul agreement 
to do an exchange. And they actually set a specific time and place for that exchange to happen. And so that sometimes it's at night, sometimes it's it's during the day, but nighttime seems to be happening more frequently with walk-ins than other times that I personally know about. So anyway, the time comes and the, the soul of the body who has been living here will leave that body and go on into the spiritual realm. Nothing is destroyed, nothing is harmed in any way, and that soul will continue on in the spirit realm for any length of time until deciding to reincarnate again. And so as that spirit soul is leaving that physical human body, the other soul comes in and takes its place. So that soul now is living as that original person who left the body and carries on the life. In other words, that that soul coming into this body uh, has the life of that person now. And the people in that life, the spouses, the children, if there are such in that life and the original family, friends, associates, and so forth. And so um, that soul gets to live here as that person. And that soul is often very different, differently motivated than the original person who leaves and, and donates the body for this purpose. So that means that the person who looks the same with the walk-in soul in it that person often seems to be quite different, although looking exactly the same, but it seems to be different than that person had originally seen to all the people who knew him or her. And, and yet it's this new soul with new motivations and um, new reasons to be here, a new way of life it wanted even different eating habits, different health habits, um, different recreational habits, different choices, preferences, feelings, moods. And so anybody who knows that original person is sometimes very baffled about, wow, it seemed like this person suddenly is quite different. Like if it's, if it's the child of the one who left, the child would think, well, mom just seems to be really different. It's almost as if she changed overnight, but she looks just the same. So anyway, that's a walk-in. And, and, and the purpose of it is for the incoming soul to do the helpful work here on earth that that original soul would like to see done. And the original person did not have those motivations at all. So it's sort of an efficient way for someone, a soul, to come and give help to humanity or maybe help to the earth itself uh, without having to go through life in the womb and infancy, childhood, teenagers, and so forth before really being able to, to give that work. So the best situation that I know of, I'm going to go back to that, is that woman who uh, went to my regression therapy colleague uh, because she was having so many allergies. Finally, after several regressions, it was discovered that she was a walk-in soul in an original person's body. And because she was newly here on earth, that soul, that soul had never been here before in previous lifetimes, and so she was not used to being on earth and she was allergic to just about everything. The good news here is that once this regression had happened and the woman realized what had gone on and that she was newly, freshly here in this other person's body, all of the allergies began to clear up. And it was just a couple of months or so later that 
she reported to the therapist that she just didn't have those allergies anymore and was able to go on with the work that, that she came here to do. So I think that was very inspiring. And it occurred to me that, you know, that's a, a good idea that it's mutual, it's agreed upon, nothing is being forced on the original person. In fact, it gives a decent way out for that person who wants to leave and is relieved to leave. So um, the next person that I was aware of who became a walk-in, this was in the mid-1990s, so just a few years after the other one, that I had heard about and decided to you know, kind of keep an eye as I go through life, keep, keep an eye open to see if there's anybody else who would ever come for that reason. And surely enough, another woman did. So in this case, um, the, the woman was in a uh, same-sex uh, marriage with a very good woman, a uh, partner, and the woman, fortunately, uh, was open-minded. In other words, I need to say the original person who was here was in this relationship with a very open-minded uh, person who explored a lot of thoughts about reality, was open to a lot of possibilities, which turned out to be a big help for what was to happen. So then... There was this extraterrestrial male being of real stature, um, real ability. He was a pilot of a spaceship, very bright man, very bright male soul. And he wanted to come to Earth and give help to human beings on Earth. So he looked around and he found this woman in the same-sex marriage who was just not really doing very much in life and was kind of thinking she was on the wrong track in life and she'd been a business person and um, she was earning a good living and everything but it just was meaningless to her and she always felt that there was something more that she should be doing but she just couldn't seem to identify that. So she was thinking that she didn't really want to be here anymore. And this extraterrestrial male being found her. And, and this would usually be during the night, probably during the human's dream time, and met with her and made the agreement, mutual, uh, that she would leave at a particular place, date, and time, and that he, as a soul, would leave that body as the pilot of the spaceship and come down and exchange with her soul and then inhabit her body so that he could do work here to help human beings. So on that appointed time, uh, they did get together. And it happened to be when the the, the woman who was going to leave was in bed with her partner. Uh, they both woke up. They were kind of aware that something strange was going on. They didn't know exactly what. But what it was was that the other soul was coming into the body of the woman who was leaving. And they just went on back to sleep, both of them. And then in the morning, they got up. And it seemed like... Uh, the the one who had had the exchange was speaking a little bit differently, like like saying, now what can I do to really be of help today? She had never said that before. And, and she said, you know, I don't feel like going to that job. It's, it's too high pressured. It's just not what I'm interested in anymore. And the uh, woman partner was just amazed to hear that sort of thing and a bit concerned. Anyway, the one who had done the exchange, the walk-in, um, quite soon thereafter quit 
that job and realized that she wanted to learn how to be a hypnotherapist and help other people with hypnotherapy work. She had realized it could be used for a variety of helpful purposes. And that's what she wanted to dedicate her life to. So she did quit her job. She did go to hypnosis training and started to set up a practice in order to really help people. Now, one of the interesting facets of this is that by that time, they began to hear about walk-ins. And so the the female partner uh, put two and two together and said, oh, that is what must have happened that particular night when it, we both woke up and something really strange seemed to be going on. We didn't understand what it was. So, and that's why my partner seems to be so different now and has quit her job and is becoming a hypnotherapist. Fortunately, she had that that broad perspective, that broad open point of view so that she could accept that and they were able to talk very openly about the whole situation. So the partner uh, kept on working and paying the bills, knowing that eventually uh, this one, the walk-in partner, uh, would be able to earn some money from her hypnotherapy work and uh, carry some of her share of the expenses, which is indeed what happened. Another interesting aspect of that particular situation was that on occasion, the uh, walk-in would at night in during sleep would leave her body and go back to the spaceship with her fellow extraterrestrials and would take a turn flying the spacecraft. And she loved that part. And she was male in, in that um, experience of going back and being the ET. Uh, so she really loved those episodes and she remembers somewhat uh, when she would come back, go back to sleep and, and then uh, wake up the next morning. She'd have a little bit of awareness of that. And we did a couple of regressions to those trips back to her being temporarily the extraterrestrial she had originally been. And that was very, very interesting to her and, and to us, definitely to me too. Um, so the, the souls can go back and forth. I learned a lot from her that a soul really can be here incarnating in another person's body by agreement and also can go out into the original realm or even the original being that they had been before making the soul exchange. Uh, so I, I learned that, and I learned that uh, they can change gender, that she could be in a female body functioning as a female here, as a human, and then also on occasion go back to be a male extraterrestrial being. Uh, so these things were, were very important to know and uh, very helpful in work that came to me that too and then um in those early years early 1990s i went to a ufo conference up in washington state and there it just happened over dinner that i started talking to uh two people a man and a woman and they were talking they were a married couple and they were talking about their daughter, who suddenly changed and seemed so different. And they knew I was a therapist, and they thought, well, maybe I could give a little insight into this. And so just like one day they woke up, and she was totally different. And she went from being very materialistically oriented and business oriented, went from that to seeming much more spiritually interested and metaphysically inclined. And the daughter was just suddenly talking about how she wanted to quit her business career and open up a metaphysical bookshop in the area where they lived. 
this was in Colorado as it happened. And, um, and the parents were just stunned because they had really been pleased that their daughter was on this wonderful career track at a young age in her 20s and seemed to be rising the ladder and earning well. And they thought, well, that's great. She's going to be secure and successful for her life. But no, she was talking very differently suddenly, which they didn't understand in any way at all. And um, anyway, they they listened to this for several weeks. Her wish, she was looking at books. She was lining up speakers to be speakers uh, in the conference room of the center she wanted to set up, and she was looking for properties. And she did that. She she was able to rent a building with a meeting room and lots of place for bookshelves and and uh, was very ready and did open that center. She had left her job completely opened her center. And by that time, the parents were really, you know, good hearted people and they got behind her and they helped her in various ways. And I think she had a sibling who helped out too. And she continued to seem different. So I, in talking to the parents, suggested that, you know, there's a possibility that she is a walk-in, which they had never heard of before that. And so they had me meet the daughter because she happened to be there at that conference as well. And we went aside and we did a regression. And yes, indeed, she had come from an extraterrestrial realm as a female extraterrestrial. And she came down and she did the soul exchange with the daughter of that couple I had been talking to, who really just was wound up in the material world and just really didn't see much point to it and didn't see much point of being here anymore. So she was perfectly willing to leave and go back into the spirit realm. So the walk-in did open up the metaphysical center and started having meetings. And one night when she was teaching a class there, she noticed that outside the window of the meeting room, there was somebody standing there. She didn't think too much of it at first, but she kept looking around and noticing that, oh, it was her father, her real father, her soul father. In other words, another extraterrestrial male whom she recognized as her father in her extraterrestrial form. So she stopped the class, said, excuse me, I just have to go outside for a few minutes and take care of something. And she went out and talked to that extraterrestrial being whom she had recognized as her father. And he was just there to observe that she really was doing what she came to do to talk about spirituality and metaphysics. And he just wanted to see that she was doing that and wanted to encourage her to keep on doing what she had come to earth to do. So that turned out to, to be a very, very happy situation. And she continued on with that work as a human being in that other person's body. And I'm sure that the other person's soul has just been doing absolutely fine in the spirit world. By this time, could even be reincarnated. Who knows? Um, then in the early 1990s also, um, I was taken about an hour from my home in Southern California uh, to meet a new person whom our mutual friend would be thought it would be interesting for me to know. And she said, this woman is, is really unusual. I just want you to see what you think when I take you to meet her. She didn't say anything else about this woman, except that she was very impressed with her and liked her a lot and thought it would just be somebody interesting for me to meet. So we went over and had a visit with this woman and uh, she was a fairly young woman. She appeared to be in her 20s or early 30s. And she had long hair and she had a long white robe on with a big full sleeve and um, had 
some uh, crystals and jewelry around her neck. She's a very spiritually oriented looking person. And she was very gracious and she welcomed it into her home. And we sat and talked in the living room. Her husband happened to be away that day. So she said, I'm really glad you came this particular day so I can really talk about my real self. And she talked about having come from a spiritual realm to help human beings on earth. And um, and I said, well, did you by any chance make a soul exchange with anyone? And And she said, Yes, she said, she said the original person who did, whom she did the exchange with, the body of whom she's living in now, she said is entirely different than I am. That she and her husband loved motorcycles and they were part of a big motorcycle group of couples and they would go out and ride their by their motorbikes every weekend and have parties and they'd drink a lot and smoke and swear and sing uh, country songs and, and then come back to their suburban Los Angeles home after that and try to conform a little bit more. <laughs> and the husband, of course, was still that way. The original person had I really enjoyed that way of life. That was natural for her, but it wasn't natural. It wasn't what the walk-in person wanted at all. And so that marriage was becoming more and more difficult as they realized the extreme differences between the two of them. But she knew that it was going to be ending up in divorce. Mm -hmm. And rather than that being sad for her, uh, you see, that had not originally been her husband. Mm -hmm. So it it didn't hurt her in that way, although she was sorry for the all the hassle and sorry for what it meant for him. She was already sorry that he just felt like she wasn't his wife anymore, even though she looked exactly the same. But although she wore different clothing now, <laughs> instead of jeans and boots and leather vests and fringes and stuff. Uh, she was now wearing these beautiful long white gowns. And she was already starting to uh, teach classes in metaphysics and spirituality. So she was going to really go and continue to do that work even when um, the, the marriage ended. So um, is, these are some really good examples of, of walk-in people whom I have known. And another one was uh, Sheila Seppi, who has walked in and from a different realm. Uh, she walked in from a realm which was very, very spiritually advanced and where everyone was part of this great, huge community of cooperation and love for each other, unconditional love. And they took a look at human beings on earth and realized that there are a lot of good ones, you know, living good lives and trying to be helpful to various other people. And also there were masses and masses of people who just did not have that kind of orientation or intent. And a lot of people who in addition to that, were really harming other people for their own self-aggrandizement. And uh, and this disturbed her uh, from her point of view of being part of this huge collective community of loving, cooperating beings. So she did a walk-in and came into um, the body of, of a woman who was ready to go. And... Um, and then that she also, the original person, had a husband and that marriage very soon looked like it was really not going to be able to continue. Uh, so she got out of that. And um, the original person had a lot of physical problems going on with her body, several different systems that were really having trouble and a lot of pain. And so 
uh, the walk-in had to uh, find ways to get healing, which the original person had not found. And so she went to many different practitioners and then decided that, well, she had to learn how to heal herself. So she came up with a whole healing modality that worked on her inherited body. And she got all of those things cleared up and was really in good shape. And then she opened a clinic uh, and trained a couple of people to help her do that particular kind of work, which she originated in order to help other people. And then she's gone on to create a huge community of uh, very spiritually, metaphysically oriented people, uh, the Conscious Awakening Network, which is part of the what she calls the Galactic Alliance. And I have commented to her so many times, wow, Sheila, it is remarkable what you keep accomplishing. You keep initiating new lecture series, new conferences that you put on, new webinars, um, and then a whole Conscious Awakening Network series of broadcasts that people could submit to about their consciousness raising work. And all of this, just one person. And she said, when every time I compliment her about a new venture that she has started for good, for really helping humanity, she just says, well, I'm just following orders. So she's very much in touch with, consciously, with that community uh, that she became from, that she came from, um, where they were all very cooperative and loving and helpful to each other. And she said, oh, I keep getting help to bring forth other people who are already on Earth. Some of them may be what we call star seeds. Uh, some of them we might call walk-ins. Some of them might be just spiritually advanced people. Um, and anyway, she's gathered hundreds of these people, sort of attracted them, uh, mostly through the internet. And um, and so they are, many of them, contributing to the understanding of other humans about spiritually developing being medically advanced, being high in consciousness, helping the whole process of our moving toward ascension and being part of the whole galactic community. So I'm going to finish with that for now, but I think that it's really a very wonderful thing, an inspiring thing, that there is such a thing as one body being able to leave life in a very untraumatic way by conscious mutual agreement and letting that body be used by another being who is here for the good of humanity and all of life and to, to really help us all. So that is what we call a walk in. Wow. Sheila has already also written a book called Walk-Ins, Cosmology of the Soul. And it tells all about this with the interviews of several people who had the walk-in experience and are here serving humanity as a human being. And um, so it, it is a wonderful program. And I suggest that uh, anybody hearing this will open to the idea that this is one of the many, many parts of reality, some of which we hadn't known about until relatively recently. Yeah, and you've done, sorry, Barbara, go on. There's many blessings to you all. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I know people feel that from you, your goodwill and your real interest in sharing valuable information to not just validate and encourage people, but also to expand everyone's understanding of what being here is all about. It's so much more than what we've been taught that it is. And so 
anyway yeah. you've, you've done such a beautiful job Barbara of explaining all of that um I I feel like I learned more about walk-ins and how that happens why it happens the different kinds um and we both know Sheila as being quite an extraordinary person so I really love yeah. that you finished with her example she is something else she's just Oh, I don't know how she wonderful. does it. She's a mother, she's a wife, she has a house, she's got, I mean, I, I just don't know how she does all the things, but she does. So even, even has a delightful sense of humor. Yes. <laughs> yes. Really a delightful, wonderful person and is doing so much good and facilitating so much for people who, you know, really have already developed wonderfully spiritually and have a lot of wisdom to share mm -hmm. i mean she even has people from other countries coming in and doing some of her broadcasts and panels and lectures and uh, so everywhere in the world that that she can touch and and bring messages of growth and spirituality and harmony it's such an important thing going on in the world. Yes. And especially since more and more, I think we are aware of many of the very, very negative things, very threatening things going on in the world. And I am so grateful to realize that there's a, a really a large community of people who are here to totally help and guide us and add good frequencies, good vibrations to the rest of us and to the world. Uh, so I just welcome wholeheartedly these wonderful, well, these walk-ins. Oh, that's a beautiful, beautiful last message, Barbara. Let's, let's leave it on that. And I hope yeah. that we'll hear from the audience about, you know, any experiences they might have had with walk-ins, either meeting one or, or having that experience themselves or questions or comments they have about it. We welcome all your comments, everyone. And um, we really are grateful that you're here listening to and learning from Barbara. Um, and please keep coming back, you know, share these these videos with others, tell people that you think might be interested and come back and let us know what you think of what we're doing here. As always, the links are below for Barbara's website and her books if you'd like to learn more about what she has accomplished. And Barbara, mm -hmm. as always, thank you so much for being here and for sharing with us what you know and just your beautiful personality. It really is such a pleasure to just chat with you about almost anything. Mm -hmm. I love it too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, on thank that you. note, you. Oh, yes, yes. Blessings, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. And we will see you next time. Great. Right.